Hi everyone and welcome back to my shooter series where we're creating a first person shooter and creating the various elements of one and this time we're going to look at changing what we've currently got which are projectiles into what we call a hit scan weapon if you don't know what a hit scan weapon is essentially if you think about any game that has a machine gun that shoots and immediately hits a target leaving damage or, or bullet holes or things like that that's what we call a hit scan basically the game is detecting whether uh, it is going to hit and then returns that straight away whereas a projectile will fly through the air first and then determine whether it hits something okay so currently we'll be doing projectiles we're going to change this so it becomes a hit scan weapon and we can make it change based on whatever we like with a simple option so for this i'm going to go back into my gun parent so if you've been following along we have a gun parent and in the gun parent we're going to add a couple more variables and we'll click on the plus symbol and we're going to change uh, make a boolean variable called is hit scan okay and another one we're going to do while we're here is we're going to change to a projectile uh variable and we're going to change that variable type to the first person projectile but this time we're going to choose the class change variable type and <coughs> pardon me um what we're going to do is go into our gun parents fire bullet function in the fire bullet function you'll see the sport actor first person projectile we're going to use the projectile variable we just made and drag that onto the class like so that means we can then assign a different projectile for different weapons so for example a rocket launcher will shoot a rocket whereas grenade launcher will shoot grenades so you want to make that a variable that can be changed that's how you do it here and i'm going to give it a default value of the first person projectile okay so with that done um let's first of all do a bit of housekeeping so you see our variable list is getting quite large now now a good way to organize that is to put in categories so if i click on my is hit scan i can see the category option on the right hand side and here i'm going to type in uh projectile projectiles and i'm going to make the projectile variable we just made as well that same category so choose a drop down projectiles okay and you can make the other categories for the rest of these but it's a good way to organize your variables so don't get a giant list of variables okay so here we have the code for our projectile as it is currently so we're going to change this and add another branch which determines what we do with a hit scan weapon so with the fire bullet execution you want to disconnect that and move it to the side and up a little bit and i'm going to get the is hit scan boolean choose get and can go to a branch okay and uh, so if it's false so it's not a hit scan we can go back down to where we just were okay so just do the projectile however if we want the hit scan to be true we're going to have to do something different than this now some of this will be the same so let's get the bits that are going to be the same so we're first of all going to need to get the parent actor and get the amount of ammo they have so i'm going to copy all of that first bit there because it's exactly the same so it's a bit of time if i just copy it so it's going to get the parent actor so this will get the the player character in this case and we're going to then check how much ammo we've currently got on our gun and if it's true we can use the first person character to get the first person camera so as first person character get first person camera you'll see it down the bottom and the um, uh, the next bit we're going to do is the bit that's different okay because currently we've got this going along the lines of spawning an actor which is a projectile this would be very different okay so the way this works is what we call a line trace so from the true part of the branch where you check the ammo type in line trace you'll see line trace by channel and a line trace essentially is a invisible line that goes out uh, from wherever you set it to wherever you set it 
and determines what it hits and returns back what it does hit. So it's a good way to check collision with certain objects, in this case enemies or walls or anything like that. Uh, so we're going to use this to draw a line out. So the way this works, we've got a start coordinate and an end coordinate, and it'll draw a line between those two. Uh, so the start coordinate, you may want to do as the end of the gun. So if I'm shooting, it comes from the end of the gun's uh, barrel. But this is weird, because uh, it, although it may be realistic, it's not actually what games actually do. And we'll go into that in a minute, and I'll show you what that actually does look like. Um, but what it does uh, mean is we have to change it to make it more realistic to what games are doing okay so it makes it more fun more accurate to what the players are playing as so as first person character we get the first person camera and let's start off with the start location actually let's go, let's show you the broken version okay so this is what you don't want to do but follow along and you'll see what i mean so with the arrow component you want to drag that out because that's the end of the gun okay that's here i want to get the world location of that and that'll be your start point of the of the laser okay of the line trace line trace the laser of my like lasers and the end point will be where the player is looking okay so the first person camera is used for that so you want to get the world location of that uh, not location sorry get the world rotation get world rotation and you want to get the forward vector and the forward vector is it looks at which way the camera is facing and gets the vector a normalized vector um, of that direction so it returns that direction as a vector okay and the vector then we're going to multiply it by a float and this multiply by float means we're going to multiply it by how far we want the bullet to travel and then this could be a, another variable but for now i'm just going to type in a value of say 2000 and if i drag, drag that into end you can see this in action um you actually see it though you need to change something on the line trace here so we've got a draw debug type it says none change it down for duration okay click compile and when we're done with that we want to go into our fully automatic weapon because that's one i've got currently equipped and we'll make sure it is become a hit scan weapon um projectiles is hit scan true okay so i click play and you can see the line trace comes out it's a big red laser beam okay and the red square means it hits something now you can see how weird it is it comes from the end of the gun and goes straight to the floor why is that well it's because we haven't got the offset attached to oh sorry wrong one. Oh, oh, oh. there we go uh it's because we're getting the forward vector of the gut uh, of the camera that isn't doing anything that's just a vector that's between like zero and one when we multiply it by 2000 it goes out sure but it doesn't actually get any height because we're not getting the location of the camera attached as well so if you go from the first person camera and get the world location of it as well and add that value to this one here and connect it up click compile it will now be risen up okay but you can see how it is not accurate it doesn't go straight to the crosshairs and that accuracy changes based on how far away you are from the wall so if i'm that close you can see how it is is realistic sure but it's not accurate to what games do if you're going to shoot your gun you expect the bullet hole or the damage the laser to go to where the crosshair is not where it actually is going to be um you also notice some green lines by the way and the green lines occur when a red line hits something it turns green okay so it carries on going uh, and it'll pick up anything else as well it picks up okay so you can see the issue i want my gun to line up perfectly with the crosshairs sure it's not realistic but it's what i expect from playing the game so let's change something in our gun parent to make that the case 
So rather than using the arrow as a starting location, I want to use the world location of the first person camera as a start location. So with the world location of the camera being plugged into the start, um, you will now see that the line that is cast from the gun is far more accurate to what we would expect to see in a shooter game. Okay. So the next bit is to add on the bits on the end. So this is the animation part. And if you have any sound effects, things like that, they come at the end as well. And we can plug that into there. And click compile. And we're pretty much done. And you can see here, the hit effect is actually there. So how do you determine whether something's been hit by this? Well, if you go into the gun parent, and you see on the line trace, you see out hit. You can break this hit open, break hit result. And there you can get all the data that is gathered by that line trace, including the hit actor and hit component. So what you can do is you can check whether or not the hit actor is an enemy, for example, or explosive barrel or something like that. And the hit actor, then you can then do a core function of it saying that you've been hit. Okay, you can call the hit function of it. So that's essentially all there is. Okay, it's quite simple. And if you do have any questions about hit scans or how they work, or if you want to tweak it to do anything custom to it, um, or anything else you have about line traces, please leave a comment below in the uh, below the video. And if you like this video and the other content I make, please subscribe and uh, like and share these videos. The more uh, get out there, the better I can make uh, more videos. And uh, don't forget to support us on Patreon if you uh, like what you see. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Hi everyone, if you do like these videos and you have liked what I've done in the past and want to see what else I can do, um, all your support is greatly appreciated on YouTube. However, I do have a Patreon set up as well where you can support me even further. Money donated by yourselves will help me make better videos and better content, um, and more frequently, hopefully. Plus, it will help me develop my own projects. Currently, I'm in a project at the moment, and I'll hopefully be able to share that with you uh, sh soon. Um, if you do so, to, uh, choose to donate and subscribe to us on Patreon, uh, you do get access to videos two weeks ahead of time, plus there are many other rewards available to you too. So head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, and uh, thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.